What's going on YouTube? Today I bring you my number 15 power rank team for the 2021 NFL season and that is the Indianapolis Colts. This is a team that a lot of people like and to be frankly I like. You know there's not a single team uh, at least recently in these videos that I don't like I don't dislike any of them. I think all of them have very good pieces on the roster. I just think a lot of these teams in this more middle level have a few too many things that either a few too many or just one big issue that's really holding them back. Um, and for the Colts, we'll get into that obviously today. But before we head into that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button to push this video out to a larger audience and see you never miss an upload. Without further ado, let's get into it. So starting off with the wide receiver position, headlining it, T.Y. Hilton, obviously, brought him back on a one-year deal. Um, I don't expect much from him. You know, he's a veteran guy that, you know, he's just, he's kind of, he's past his prime, obviously. Um, he's not ideally the guy you'd want to have as your wide receiver num number one. Um, beyond him, I do like some of the depth. I mean, you have Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell, two very young, uh, talented receivers with a ton of upside. Behind them, uh, Zach Pascal as your number four is a pretty solid number four. Um, no one really else to talk about besides that, but you do, for the most part, have a solid top four there. Uh, again, obviously, Hilton just passes prime, but you do have three younger guys here, two of which do have an extreme amount of potential. So because of that youth and that potential, it is going to be good enough to get a B-, minus. but uh, T.Y. Hilton, obviously, you can do much better than that as your receiver number one. Uh, left tackle. Picking up Eric Fisher was a fantastic move. Um, you know, I've always been a bit bigger of a fan of Fisher than most people. Um, you know, after they had failed to address tackle in the in the, the draft, I was kind of confused as to what their plan was there. Um, and if you go back and look at my predictions for free agency, uh, the Colts was actually my landing spot for Fisher because I think it is a great landing spot for him. I think he fits really nicely. Um, it is just a one-year deal, but it is definitely at least still a solid patch-up, even though it is a patch-up for this season. Uh, you can look to address that position probably next draft class. So um, overall, I like that bring in. Sam Tevy and Julian Davenport are also, you know, nice, solid, um, young depth to have behind Fisher. Perhaps one of them kind of uh, emerges as, you know, a favorite to start next season. We'll have to see. But you do have a solid enough starter, two solid backups full of youth. So that's going to get you a, a B+. Plus. This is a pretty solid room all around. Not quite an A, but it is a B+. Plus. Left guard. Headlined by Quentin Nelson, in my opinion, the best guard in football, the F best offensive lineman in football, one of the best players in football. Um, yeah, I mean, this guy is insane. I think in, in three seasons so far, he's let up three sacks, one per season. Um, he has been dominant since day one, and honestly, he's already on his way to becoming a Hall of Famer and potentially one of the best offensive linemen we've ever seen. So, I mean, is do you have to say much else than that? Behind him, sure, whatever. I mean, Will Holden's fine as a backup, um, but it really doesn't matter when you have a player as talented as Quentin Nelson. Um, to be honest, like... 2018 you can make a legit case that quentin nelson could go number one overall that is how talented nelson is so um really doesn't matter about the depth behind it that's an a plus quentin nelson is fantastic uh center position ryan kelly was not the best draft pick in the world a few years ago but you know now that the rest of the offensive line is looking better in general it is a much better pick um you know if you're just trying to build an offensive line i don't recommend center being your starting point uh which is kind of what the colts did regardless though he is a solid center in today's league um again no one really behind him but he is a solid enough guy with no depth though that does bring it down to a b minus for me instead of like a b Right guard, easily their weakest position of their offensive line, uh, Mark Gl Gl Glowinski. Um, maybe Glowinski. Either way, um, he, he's what, you know, he's a good guard. Uh, really nothing more than that. Yeah, he's not bad by any means, but he's easily the weakest part of this offensive line. Uh, Will Fries uh, picked him up. You know, he's whatever is your backup. Overall, like I said, it's easily the weakest position of the offensive line. And because of that, it's just pretty meh to me all around. So it's going to be a C, especially with just kind of no depth. Uh, right tackle, Braden Smith, one of the better right tackles in football. Um, he's a very solid guy to have. 
once again, really no one behind him, but in general, you have a very solid starting tackle there with Smith. Um, so, you know, that's good enough to earn you a B for me. Um, I do think he's a bit better than Ryan Kelly. Overall, this offensive line, very talented. I mean, could you just imagine if Andrew Luck had this kind of an offensive line? My God, he, he'd, he'd still be playing, um, which is unfortunate, but at least they have it now. Issue with that is I don't like the quarterback, and we'll get to that later, obviously. But um, moving on to the tight end room, this was a, this is a pretty solid tight end room. Um, you know, it was a bit better when they had Trey Burton, obviously. But uh, I think going into this year, you're probably going to have Jack Doyle as your number one. But I would not be surprised if Mo Ali Cox uh, ends up getting the, the uh, majority of receptions by the end of the year. He's a very talented guy that kind of broke out last year. Um, and then you picked up Kylan Granson out of SMU. Um, who's a pretty solid tight end as well. I think he makes up for a really nice number three there. Um, no one else really worth talking about here, but you do have a very, very good uh, three tight end room here. So, I mean, this is this is uh, really good. I, it's it's up there with the, be the best tight end rooms in the NFL. So that's going to get you an A minus, just because there's no one special here to make it an A, but an A minus. Now we move on to the big weak spot of the offense, and that is quarterback. A lot of people love Carson Wentz. You know, I understand um, 2018 was his best year. He had Frank Reich as his OC that year. Um, I do not believe that pairing Carson Wentz back up with Frank Reich is just going to automatically make him this great quarterback again. To be honest, I don't even expect him to be solid. <clears throat> I do expect him to pay 70 or play 75% of the snaps. So, I mean, you know, you're giving your first round pick to, uh, the Eagles at that point. Um, you know, it's just with Carson Wentz, I just don't, I don't see it anymore. Um, I think he's a bit too banged up and just a bit too far for him to really come back. He definitely could. Um, th there are as many, many worlds where he does come back to be a, a good enough quarterback for this, these Colts to be competitive. But I just don't see it from Carson Wentz. I just think he's been hurt too much. And you've just, I've seen too much bad stuff from him to where I just don't have. And maybe, maybe it all it t really takes is that change of a coach and culture uh, and location. But I just don't see that being the fix for Wentz. So unfortunately, that does really bring the value of this offense and the team as, in a, as a whole down. Obviously, having that offensive line um, is good, except he, when they were healthy, had one of the best offensive lines in football, even in Philadelphia. And this receiving core is definitely better than what he had in Philly, but it's it's not much better. Um, and, it, you know, the tight end rooms are pretty similar in terms of talent. So overall, I mean, the offense is now the big change, obviously, is going to be the way they're run. Uh, Frank Reich is an offensive genius. Doug Peterson was not that much of an offensive genius by the end of his tenure there. Um, I still don't think he was one of the worst coaches in the league, like some people say, but he was definitely far from, like, Frank Reich levels. Um, either way, I mean, Carson Wentz, whatever. Jacob Eason, I, I'm not a big fan of either. Um, I, You know, people were talking about him potentially being the starter, and I was not okay with that because he would have been the worst starter in the league, in my opinion. And that's below guys like Tua and uh, Drew Locke, so, and Jordan Love. Um, behind them, you picked up Sam Englinger out of uh, Texas, which was a nice pickup. I don't think he'll be anything special, but I think you can develop into him into a nice little backup there. Overall, I mean, it, it's uh, not a very good room. I already explained, you know, why I don't really like Carson Wentz that much. Um, <clears throat> I, I think, in, in a way, um, the Colts' offense is actually a bit more complicated than the Eagles' offense, uh, which could, which Wentz could struggle with. And again, even if the talent is there, I just don't know if he has it in him after the injuries and such to do so. But we'll have to see. You know, he as per a lot of these recent teams, the Broncos and uh, you know the Dolphins. A lot of those teams, the X factor is really the quarterback position, and that remains true with the Colts as well. So all in all, I mean, this quarterback room, it's going to get you a D minus. You've got that potential with Wentz, you know, Elinger and Eason are young guys that you can develop. You've definitely not got anyone here that you preferably want starting, though. Uh, and then the running back room. Thing, things look a lot better on the running back room. Um, you know, Jonathan Taylor looked great. I think he'll probably be the best running back out of this class. And this looks to be a very good running back class. Um, you know, J.K. Dobbins, Jonathan Taylor, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, um, Antonio Gibson, although he was undrafted, James Robinson, obviously. Uh, and I think out of all those guys, Jonathan Taylor looks the brightest. Uh, you have Cam Akers, too, obviously, but he's out for the year. So overall, I mean, Jonathan Taylor, though, I do really like him. He showed a lot of good stuff last year. Um, and so coming in as the number one over a guy like Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines, great for him. Um, I don't know if Marlon Mack will be the three like this, you know, like our lads has, but I definitely think he'll get a lot less snaps. Um, 
you know, because Naheem Hines is your receiving back, your, um, you know, yeah, I mean, your receiving back, and he's really good at that. Um, one of the better receiving backs in the NFL. So, yeah, Marlon Mack's workload is definitely going to be decreased, but he only came back on a one-year deal, so, I mean, he's only there for a year anyways. Either way, I mean, no one else behind those three. Regardless, this might make up the best uh, running back trio in the league. Um, you've got a few other teams that could challenge them. There are better duos, but trios, this is probably the best in the league. So that's obviously fantastic to have for a team that could and probably will struggle in the passing game a lot. Also, obviously helps that you have uh, one of the best offensive lines and one of the best run blockers that we've seen in a long time. So <clears throat> all in all, this running back room definitely helps the team out a lot. This is one of the best in the league, so it's going to get an A. Uh, once again, just no one special here yet because Jonathan Taylor has that potential. Uh, not enough to give it an A+, plus, but an A. So all in all, like it... Wow. 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 Big voice crack. Um, all in all, uh, again, the quarterback position is the X factor for this offense. Um, you know, obviously the receiving room could be a bit better, but all, you know, it's a, it's a big, big, big if with Carson Wentz. If he plays um, even solid, this is easily a playoff team. I just don't see that from him personally. So moving on to the defense, um, this defense is pretty good. Um, you know, I mean, you've got a lot of great pieces along here. Uh, the, now, defensive end is not one of those good pieces. Um, your starting guy is probably going to be uh, Kamoko Ture, not whoever Taekwon Lewis is. Uh, it's going to be Kamoko Ture. I'd imagine Odi Igbo probably comes in as your two, and then um, Al Kadin uh, behind those two. Uh, Kameko Torre is a whatever, you know, he's a, not someone you'd preferably want starting. They drafted Odi Yingbo in the second round, um, which was a bit interesting to me. I would have much rather them taken a tackle than a edge, to be honest. Especially a guy like Odi Yingbo, who has shown some extremely good play and has a ton of potential. It's just the injury is a bit concerning. We don't really know if he's going to return to that. If he does kind of return to his college form before he got hurt, um, Odi Yingbo could be a fantastic addition to this team, and it would make for a very, very scary uh, defensive line. But as it stands right now, he's kind of whatever, and then, um, you know, Akadim Muhammad is uh, whatever is a three. I mean, overall, you have a pretty okay room here um just because you know there's not really anyone here i'd even consider solid for the most part it's gonna give me a bit a little bit less than a c so i'm gonna give it a c minus but it is a c minus because again Torre is still a bit of a young guy um and Odi yungbo has a ton of potential so that's gonna be a c minus for me there but looking at the defensive tackle room now although beyond the first two there's not really much here i mean you know antoine woods is whatever but DeForest buckner is fantastic he, there was a big big difference between when he was and wasn't on the field last year for the Colts um this guy was a heck of a steal for a first round pick uh from the 49ers they really wish they could have had this guy back um you know DeForest Buckner is a, an absolute monster along the defensive line uh just an incredible player all around so I mean that enough you know does enough but then you also have Grover Stewart who's a pretty solid uh guy to place right next to him overall this defensive tackle room the depth is whatever but you do have one of the best defensive tackles in the game um and then you know a pretty solid guy behind him so that's also going to be an A for me uh not an A plus just because the depth but uh an A nonetheless and then at the other defensive end room, uh, I like it a bit better than the other one. Um, Quiddy Pay was one of my favorite pass rushers in the class. Um, I think he's a pretty talented guy. And this, uh, the Colts are a fantastic scheme fit for him. So that's really nice to have, obviously. Um, behind him, Isaac Rochelle, who was a pretty solid guy at times for the Chargers uh, in years past. So he's a pretty solid guy to have as your backup there. Um yeah, overall, I mean, you have two young guys, one of which that I, I really like. Again, I love the scheme fit and stuff. Uh, I like it a bit better than the other room. There's definitely that upside and potential with these two guys. Uh, no one behind them, but it really doesn't matter. So this is going to be a C plus for me for right now. Again, Quiddy Pay uh, is one of, I think Quiddy Pay is probably my um, second choice for defensive rookie of the year. So we'll have to see um, first being Jalen Phillips. But uh, moving on to the linebacking room. We're just going to group this in as one whole thing. Bobby Okariki is uh, whatever. Zaire Franklin is whatever. EJ Speed is uh, whatever. Um, Zaire Franklin is, you know, we already talked about him. Um, Matthew Adams, whatever. Obviously, the headliner of this linebacking room is uh, Darius Leonard. Um, and, you know, here comes the uh, Darius Leonard hive mind. He's not that good. Um, he is really good in coverage. He's declined every year in production since his rookie year. Uh, as a run stopper, he is fine. 
And this is another one of those cases where, you know, just because I say he's overrated does not mean I think he's bad. I still think he's a top 10 linebacker. I just don't think he's like number one, like some people say. Um, I'd probably have him somewhere like the five to seven range. Um, he's good. He's a great pass coverage guy, but there, there's definitely better than him. And he has declined every year a bit. So, you know, I still think he's a great linebacker, but I just don't think he's that great like people make him out to be. Um Behind him, Jordan Glasgow and uh, Sky Moore. <clears throat> this is a very meh linebacking room all around. I mean, I like Okariki. He's a nice little athletic guy. It's it's definitely held up by Leonard here. Uh, but again, because I don't think he's like that elite linebacker like some people say, I'm going to give this a B for right now. Um, you know, but if Darius Leonard could have like a nice little bounce back here, because it's not been big um, declination in his years, but he's definitely declined a bit since his fantastic rookie season. So. Uh, quarterback position. Uh, I like this a bit better than some people do. Um, even though the Colts aren't a team that really value cornerback all that much, they've actually got a nice little group here. Um, in my opinion, I think the best cornerback on this team actually is Kenny Moore, who is arguably the best slot corner in football. Um, I'd, I'd actually just say two behind the behind uh, Bryce Callahan. He's a fantastic slot uh, to have there, obviously. Your number two, Xavier Rhodes, who played very solid last season. They brought him back on a one-year contract, see if they can keep him around or if he has similar production. Uh, Rocky Austin has, has not really lived up to the hype uh, of when he was drafted, but still does have that potential for sure. TJ Carey, also a very solid guy to have as your slot, um, but can also play on, on the outside. Um... Not really, anyone else, not really anyone else to talk about besides those four guys, but it does make up for a really solid group here, actually. And I think you have two um, really solid corners here. One of which is the best, one of the best slot corners in football. So um, overall, I mean, it, it's a B plus. This is actually a very solid corner room, and uh, I think people underrated a little bit, to be honest. Um, it does get helped out in some respects for sure uh, by the likes of uh, Buckner, and you know, definitely get some help with Quiddy Pay and Odie Ingbo if he turns out. But um, yeah, this is a very solid cornerback room though where it gets a little dark is the safety room um free safety i mean you're probably starting sean davis to be honest uh it could really be any of these guys i mean it could be marvell tell to be honest um you really don't have a clear starter here in my opinion um it, regardless of who starts it's a pretty bad room i mean you know, whoever starts here is going to be a bad starter um a big downgrade from losing malik hooker so it's an F, unfortunately. It's just, it's a really bad room. So, uh, the strong safety room is definitely a lot better. Um, Julian Blackman is a nice young guy that I think has a lot of potential. Um, I like Cardi Willis as well as, you know, kind of that backup. And uh, Sean Davis was a decent pickup in the draft. It's still not the best because, you know, there's no one here even solid yet. Uh, but there's definitely some nice youth and, and um, guys you can develop in, into a quality starter here. So because of that, it's going to get a, a little boost. It's going to be a D plus. But yeah, the safety room it's not looking like a good it's not looking good for these colts they're probably going to have some difficulties with getting beat over top um unless they find a way to use their corners pretty well which i don't doubt that uh, i i definitely think they could find a way to do that but the safety room definitely the weakest part of this team besides the quarterback position uh so yeah overall this defense it is really solid. You have some really nice, uh, you know, corner pieces to it with Buckner, um, you know, Kenny Moore and Darius Leonard. Some nice young guys that you brought in, um, you know, Odie Yingbo and Pei. Uh, overall, this is a nice, young, solid defense that is not going to be the weak part of this team. This this defense will definitely get the job done. Again, I just feel like Carson Wentz might hold a little bit back. Um, but before all that, let's talk about the special teams. Um, Rod Rodrigo uh, Blankenship, fantastic kicker. Um, you know, he's already become one of the best kickers in the NFL. He's great. Um, Eddie Pinero, I didn't even know he was uh, their backup. He's actually a, a decent guy to have as your backup there. Um, and then uh, Rigoberto, Rigoberto, I guess, uh, Sanchez, um, as your punter. Never heard of him. But, uh, you know, your, your kick returner, um, you don't really have a clear kick return, or it could be a lot of different guys, to be honest. I don't even, I'm not even going to name one. It could be a lot of different guys. Uh, Colts fans, you probably know who your kick returner is better than I do. But regardless, this roster, like I said, defense is going to get the job done. 
offense is going to have help. Obviously, you know, we'll talk about coaching and, and stuff in a second. There's a lot of key good things to like about it. Great offensive line. Uh, receiving room is young and full of potential. One of the best running back rooms. A tight end room is really, really good. Um, quarterback is just a big concern. I don't think Carson Wentz gets it done for these Colts, and that's ultimately what's going to hold him back at the end of the day. But uh, let's go take a look at their schedule. We'll talk about their coaching culture. And taking a look here at their schedule, um, it's not one of the harder schedules, to be honest. I mean, playing in a division with the Jaguars and Texans um, obviously makes things a bit easier. Um, you've also got some games against teams like, you know, the Jets. Um, you know, there's a lot of games that are definitely toss-ups here. I mean, the Colts, you know, we're now on that, um, you know, upper half tier of, of teams in the NFL. Again, this is a team that if the quarterback position goes well for them, They'll make the playoffs pretty easily, as is the case with a lot of these teams, the Dolphins, the Broncos, Washington, um, you know, more teams that, you know, than that. Um, so it, it's just a big depending on <clears throat> will the quarterback play well or not. Um, I don't think he will at the end of the day. You know, so when you're facing teams with tough defenses, it's going to be hard to win these games. Um, you know, the Rams, um, Ravens, 49ers. Uh, uh, Patriots, Buccaneers, you know, those are all going to be very tough games because I imagine even if Carson Wentz does play a bit better than normal, he's going to struggle in those games. Um, so, you know, playing teams with the weaker defenses, um, and I wouldn't consider many of these teams having weak defenses, it doesn't help um, with the fact that, you're, you know, your quarterback's probably going to hold you back this season. I love Frank Reich. He's a fantastic offensive mind. Uh, and, you know, hopefully he does something with Carson Wentz to where he, you know, returns to his old form. Um, you know, the culture here is really nice as well. I, you know, this is a team that um, has an identity and, you know, they know what that is. I think it's just at the end of the day with the quarterback situation and the schedule being pretty tough overall because you know you're facing a lot of good defenses uh and, and even though the jaguars and texans should be easy games they're divisional games so there's just a few too many things to where i could very well see this team making the playoffs i mean technically if you do the math i mean this is the team that would be just outside of the playoffs in my power rankings um but, you know, it's just, I think those two things make up for it to be just on the outside because those are two very difficult things to work with and still make the playoffs. I don't think they're that good of a team. I don't think Frank Reich is that good of a head coach. Um, but overall, again, like I said, there is definitely many worlds where Carson Wentz does play well and, you know, they go on to the playoffs and make a deep run because this is a very talented team. But at the end of the day, they are my number 15 powering team as of right now. But that is the video. If you guys liked it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss that upload uh, or any upload. Um, so yeah, without further ado, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.